If I had a ball, the look of a hospital bed, kind of hospital room. Here's the TV. Nothing on the walls, super white. My little suitcase because you have to bring your own towel. I'm gonna show you myself. Voila, c'est moi. Super glam, huh? I've lived long enough to know that expectations are always a setup for doom and gloom, but I have just gotten out of the hospital yesterday from back surgery, and I had so much fear around this surgery and so much anticipation about what the results might be of the surgery, because I've never had surgery before in my life, and I've never had to go under general anesthesia before. And so I was prepared to either die or become paralyzed or wake up with like so much dramatic pain that I would be like screaming and writhing for days. Clearly, I've watched too many movies and television shows. But anyway, that was the big fear was one of those three things was going to happen as an outcome of this decision to have the surgery. And so when I woke up from the anesthesia, which by the way, oh my God, it's the coolest thing ever, best drug ever, whatever it was that they put in the anesthesia. But when I woke up and I didn't feel that much pain, it was such a relief that in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm fine, which as it turns out, is not the case. And so by the end of the day yesterday, I was in a great deal of pain. And this morning, I'm in a great deal of pain. And terrified, honestly, that I just fucked up the surgery by pushing and not following my doctor's instructions, which were basically to stay in bed except for 10 minutes every hour. And so I'm just hoping <laughs> that in the coming days, the pain will become manageable again and that I have not completely undone um, all of the surgery and that I will truly recover 100%. So we will see. My task seemed simple enough. Walk for 10 minutes, but every movement was painful. So just taking that walk down and up the hallway was a massive undertaking at the beginning. I want to reflect a little bit about powerlessness. <laughs> like anytime I have to get up, it's a thought process. Is it worth it? What's the cost benefit analysis <laughs> of, of sitting up or of lying down or of pretty much doing anything? And it's one of those things where you become just so grateful for all the things that you take for granted like being able to move freely, being able to breathe freely, being able to do a micro twist or a micro bend. Like you just don't realize all the tiny little movements you do throughout the day that are woven into your spine, <laughs> for fuck's sake. So yeah, powerlessness. I am supposed to get my bandages cleaned like my scar cleaned my incision my incision cleaned and rebandaged every two days we're now on day three and my bandage has not been changed my incision has not been cleaned because the nurse that was supposed to come last night to do it which was already like more than 48 hours which was the recommended amount of time so 48 hours would have been coming at noon but she was going to come at six o'clock yesterday evening and she didn't and I have to be honest like I fucking freaked out <laughs> it 
And we had a long conversation and she was like, don't worry about it. It's totally okay. It won't be a problem if I come tomorrow. I'll be there like around one o'clock. And I'm just thinking, like I'm doing the ticker in my head and thinking there are all these extra hours past the deadline. And what if I die? Like what if I get septic shock or something, sepsis or whatever that stuff is called, like an infection or I don't know, like, what if I die because you fucking didn't show up when you were supposed to? And this is where the powerlessness comes in and the humility at realizing like, hmm, I'm possibly overreacting to this. I'm reacting at a much bigger level than the situation calls for. Potentially, potentially not. Like, I don't know. And this is another piece of the powerlessness is being in a situation where I don't have all the information I am not an expert, I am not a doctor, I am not a nurse, and all of those things make me feel extremely vulnerable, and I'm doing all of this in a different language. And when I get nervous or scared or tired or I'm in pain, it weakens my ability to speak coherently in French and feel confident about what someone is telling me. and how much of what they're saying I'm truly understanding and how much of the system I'm truly understanding. This morning, I called this woman, this nurse again. I wanted a specific time that she was going to show up so I could mentally prepare and I could know that if she didn't show up by this time, then I was in deep shit and I was going to have to do like another emergency solution of which I have no clue. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I would do if she doesn't show up. Uh, so I texted her and she didn't respond, which of course sent my panic to <laughs> the next level. So I called SOS Médecins, which is the hotline if you need a doctor in an emergency and if you need a doctor to make a house call, which is extraordinary. Like we don't have that in the US. So already that's amazing. I've used that in the past, but I'm actually not in an emergency. Like I'm not bleeding out. There's no crisis. I'm not writhing in pain. And I'm needing a nurse, not a doctor. So as it turns out, SOS Médecins is not the right hotline for me. And so, but the woman was very kind, a little brusque, but kind. And she gave me the correct number for what I'm going to call SOS Enfermière, like SOS Nurses. I don't know if that's really the name of the hotline, but for me, that's what it's going on uh, my contacts list as. And it's a voicemail. And it's a voicemail that basically says like, I will call you back, but not immediately, uh, and let us know what you need, which when you're in a panic is, is not particularly helpful, <laughs> but I left a message explaining, like I had this nurse, she was supposed to come. She didn't come. She may come now, but I don't know. And if she doesn't come, then I'm in deep shit. And like, what do I do? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Please help. Please help. Please help. I'm American, but I live here and I have a cut vital. Like I have the the French social security service. So like, you'll get paid. Please call me back. Three minutes later, the woman, the nurse that was supposed to have come out last night called in response to my text that I had sent, I don't know, a couple of hours ago saying, I'm going to be there at one or one thirty, which is what she had said last night. And I have the stuff that I need. And I know I could tell by her tone of voice that she knew that I was flipping out. Like, it was so placating, <laughs> like kind of humiliating because I'm a grown woman, but when I get sick or when I'm in a situation that I don't have control over or I don't understand fully, I turn into like a little kid. I turn into like, not even a kid, I turn into an animal. I turn into a frightened kitten in the back of a cave who is crying out for help, but is going to like scratch the fuck out of anybody who puts their hand out towards me to come close. And I just want answers and I want certainty. It's about trust, which is another thing I'm discovering I struggle at, is trusting that she will show up at 1 or 1.30 and that it will be fine and that she won't pull back my bandages and discover like a huge infection and that I'm going to die. <laughs> and that in fact, she'll just dress the incision and give me the clean bandages and then I'll see her again in two days and life will move on. I'm losing my mind. 
I think I've watched every single fucking interesting Netflix video there is. So Netflix doesn't even attract me at the moment. Like the idea that all I will be able to do is kind of wander in slow circles in the hallway of my apartment and lie here. I don't think I can sustain that for very long. I have never been more interested in exercise than I am at this very moment when I can't exercise. So it is very humbling to be completely knocked out after wandering the dark hallway for 10 minutes like a caged lion. It's driving me crazy that I can't do simple things. <laughs> Life is just never ending growth. I think when I was younger, I had this idea that at some point I would become an adult with a capital A and like everything would make sense and I would know how to do everything and everything would become easy and it's been very difficult to shed and I find that I am still like at 53 <laughs> trying to shed it. Aside from my catastrophizing what was going to happen with this operation, when I came out the other side, my next leap into ridiculousness was, oh, I can start jogging. Not that I've jogged ever in my entire life. I'm not crippled, therefore I have no need to have a recovery process. I am continuing to discover, like every hour on the hour, how false that, uh, that myth is. Okay, I'm venturing outside. I'm a little nervous because I have to ensure that my guardian, like the apartment manager, is around so that they can open the door for me uh, to get in and out of the building because the door is too heavy currently since I can't lift or push or move anything more than two pounds. We shall see, but wish me luck. The doors are open. I am free. Oh my God. Outside. Yay. I'm so happy. I'm officially going insane. There is a danger to having too much time with oneself and one's thoughts. So it turns out that, you know when you're super busy, and you think, oh my God, if I only had the time to myself, I would do all these things. Well, let me tell you, it's not true. It's a lie. Maybe you discovered that during COVID, but I have all these things that I could do all the time in the world at the moment because I can't work. I can't take public transportation. I can't sit. And it turns out that there's not much motivation to do much while standing up. Like, I want to sit to do everything. I want to sit to write. I want to sit to create art. I want to sit to have a good conversation with a friend. It's very odd to do everything standing up. I need to have a way to take all of my organs and all of my muscle and all my fat and all everything off of my lower back, off of my sacrum, off of my hips. Because otherwise, like we were not built well. Our hips didn't really make the full transition <laughs> and they kind of suck at their job. I'm a little annoyed with, with evolution for not doing that piece of it better. Yeah. Clearly I have far too much time on my hands and I'm losing my mind and I'm now debating evolution. Not that it exists, it exists, but just the, the efficiency of the process, like it could have done better. So goals for today, go outside three times, 
Yeah, I think that's, I think that's my goal for the day. Fucking A. I used to be productive and ambitious. Now I just want to go outside three times. This is the view from my bed that I have spent an inordinate amount of time in the last two weeks looking at. And if you notice, I've now become obsessed with this crack. I'm convinced it's basically the edge of a slab of like drywall or something like that. And it goes all the way out. And then there's like another crack that like proceeds elsewhere. but. This is the challenge of living on the top floor uh, in Paris where it rains an inordinate amount of time um, during the year. And like this ceiling gets painted every year <laughs> or it feels like and the crack returns. And I'm just waiting kind of for this lamp to crash down on me once this slab finally um like separates fully and you don't notice it if you're not staring at the ceiling if you just kind of glance the ceiling from far away see it's like barely there but the moment you get close it's like a fucking big crack and it's very precise and it's right above my head so if i die um this may be why. I'm officially losing my mind. So I clearly don't spend 24 hours prone on my bed. However, my stitches were just um, snipped yesterday so that they can dissolve better into my body. I'm not quite sure because all of the instructions for what's happening are in French and all the conversations are in French. And, and I understand about 85, 90% of it, but it's always that 10% or that 5% or that one word that I feel like is the difference between me really knowing what's going on in my life and me having really no clue. <laughs> and I kind of feel like I really have no clue ever about what's going on in my life. So the pain has reduced enough that there are moments when I forget that I have to move in a certain way. And so I'll go to get into bed and I'll like go face first or I'll go to move like directions and I'll twist, not a good feeling. And yesterday I did that getting to bed and realized I was in the middle of the bed in pain because I'd moved in a way I shouldn't have moved and then couldn't get out of bed <laughs> because there was like no way for me to turn in the way that I needed to turn and be close enough to an edge of the bed. Like I was literally in the middle of the bed. Obviously I finally got out, but uh, it's frustrating. It's like frustrating being on the road to recovery. I know that I am progressing down the road. Like that is clear, but it's just not happening fast enough for my expectations and my wishes and so like the amount of times that I just need to stop and breathe and since a couple of the stitches were taken out yesterday I'm in a lot more pain and I also reduced my some of my medications and my painkiller stuff and so I'm in a lot more pain um which I think it's good pain but it just is pain so like I'm having to lie back down a lot more between little walks or between times that I'm on my feet. That is very humbling and feels like I'm going backwards, even though I'm pretty sure, fingers crossed, that I'm not. this 
morning. It makes me want to get outside so desperately. I have figured out how to get out of my apartment building by myself. I do this like shimmy thing. I wish I could demonstrate it to you, but I don't have any place to put the camera <laughs> to show you how I do it. But basically it's like I open the door a tiny bit and then I shove my body into the crack in the door and then I use like my whole body to like wiggle out kind of like a worm out of a fish's mouth or something like that. It's not an attractive move, <laughs> but it works. It, like gets me out the door. Um, it gets me back in the building without having to wait till somebody walks by and I get their attention to help me move, open the door. It's fucking freezing, but I'm very, very happy to be outside. All I want to do is be able to jump out of the bed and then plop down on the sofa and then jump back up and grab my coat and dash to the elevator and run downstairs and skip down the street. That's kind of my dream. Yes, but...